So if you're uh, not here for the um, cancer data and its analysis practical workshop, you're in the wrong room. So now it's time to leave. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll get started. So as Michelle indicated, all our material is uh, going to be, or is currently, or will be on the bioinformatics.ca uh, website. And what we do for all the material there, and we have this in front of all our presentation, is a Creative Commons license, which basically uh, provides, uh, says that you can take this material, you can share it with your colleagues, you can use it in your own uh, teaching material if you need to. You can, um, it's, a, it's got a uh, share alike, and, which means that if you share it, then you have to uh, say where you got it from, who, which, which lecture, and so forth. And um, there's sort of a viral component to it as well, in that if you use our slides in a talk for, for yourselves, that means you have to share your slides too. So that's, that's a little catch, but it sort of encourages uh, people to, to share their slides. In addition to that, I'm overly, I'm overzealous, I think, sometimes, but I like to share, and I like to encourage sharing, and I like people to tweet, blog, whatever they like to do, uh, they're, they're also all available to do it. So we had the slide on, I, I mentioned on bioinformatics.ca, I also put them on SlideShare um, as, um, from there as well, so more the merrier. So today I'm going to talk to you about databases, and so the databases in which uh, we find uh, cancer genomic information. Uh, there are many of these out there, and so we're not going to cover all of them. We're going to actually only cover a very small fraction of them. Uh, and um, as uh, Jun Jun mentioned, we're also part of the International Cancer Genome Consortium, ICGC, which is one of the many acronyms you'll hear about today. And so. Um, so we're going to have heavy focus on ICGC resources. ICGC uh, includes the TCGA, another acronym, the Cancer Genome Atlas, as an NIH-funded project. And so we sometimes talk about ICGC and TCGA, and, uh, and it's sometimes unclear which is what and what it means and so forth, and I'm going to hope to clarify that with you today. So you have my contact information here. And the schedule is that we'll talk, I'm going to give you a bit introduction about, I'm going to do a little plug and advertisement for the Bioinformatics, uh, dots, Canadian Bioinformatics Workshop Series, a few databases about how to act, get permission to access some of this data and the issues re relating to accessing human data and uh, uh, the privacy and ethics issues related to that. And uh, shortly, uh, or for, a small, for a few slides only, I'll, I'll talk also about Cosmic which is a very important database used in cancer research. It's actually uh, uh, comes out of the Sanger Institute here and is a, uh, also integrated with the ICGC data portal. So bioinformatics.ca uh, is a, um, a website hosted at the OSCR, which uh, is the homepage for the Canadian Bioinformatics Workshop Series. It's also the hope we also post uh, bioinformatics jobs. We also post uh, profiles of Canadian bioinformaticians and uh, links directory and so forth. There's quite a few resources, but the, the bulk and the most important thing about this website is the fact that it hosts uh, the, the workshops and you can apply to the workshops and so forth. One of the flagship workshops that we have is the uh, bioinformatics of cancer genomics. And, um, and it's, these are, this is a five-day workshop we, we, provide, we uh, have uh, once a year. And um, it's, um, the details of, of this workshop are, are here. Next year, we're planning to host this workshop and a few other ones. So it's a bit cut off, but it's, uh, we've got, um, we will probably have up to 12 workshops next year. So we have a cancer genomics I just mentioned. We have a high throughput biology on, on which is basically a next gen sequencing workshop. We have introduction to R um, and exploratory analysis of, of data with R. We have RNA seq workshop. We have um, uh, pathways. We have statistics analysis of metagenomics. And the three bottom ones are new workshops which are going to introduce next year, which is bioinformatics of big data. So learning how to use cloud computing to uh, work with the various work with the various data types, but mostly next-gen sequencing data, um, epigenomic data analysis, and quantitative genomics. So these are all like two, three-day workshops, except for the cancer one, which I told you was five days, uh, and uh, they're offered uh, mostly in uh, 
this summer, but we're probably going to expand a bit uh, outside of that time period. And all workshops have the have not only this workshop will have this material online, but all workshops have their material online. So for each of these workshops that took place last year, you can go online and get the PowerPoint or the PDF files, or there's a movie file. So like Michelle mentioned, we record the voice over the PowerPoint, and so you have the lecturers' uh, voices uh, in a movie format that you can download to your iPod and listen to or watch while you're getting home on the, on the train. Um, so the course, um, if you have any questions, you want to email us about the, this course, uh, the course underscore info at myfranks.ca. The website is there, and uh, there's a mailing list. Uh, you'll get announcements about new workshops. It's a very low-volume mailing list where you get a few announcements about the new workshops scheduled and the material being online and so forth. So this is sort of my opportunity to sort of share with you that Part of the reason why we make the material online available is that open access, open data, open source are really essential for science. And so this is our, our sort of showing you or, and demonstrating and applying this to our what we do. And um, it being open about what we do, about uh, the science we do, is, a, is not only a, a thing we should do, it's a responsibility and obligation and something that comes with the privilege of getting publicly funded. Uh, to do this work. And so obviously the workshop series are um, are subsidized by our institution and so it's a uh, we we get sponsors, we get we collect fees for the workshops and so forth, but we, it's not for it's not for it's not run as a for-profit organization. It's really run to break even so that we can pay for all the expenses of the things that we have to pay for. So uh, I'm going to start off uh, this uh, database of, of cancer uh, data uh, lecture and with uh, showing you uh, a few slides from this book, The Emperor of All Maladies. How many people have read this book? Well, half the class. Great. I think it's a great book. I really enjoyed reading it. Um, some great quotes in it. Uh, cancer therapy is like beating a dog with a stick to get rid of its fleas. So that's not very good. Um, and um, obviously, the, to understand cancer and to understand what is uh, not functioning properly is, is, is key to the, the work we do. And so we think that understanding the, the cancer at the genomic level, understanding the mutations and the pathways that are involved in cancer, will be able to have better understanding of what best therapies we can apply. And obviously, there's a whole um, series of, of pathways and, and biological functions that need to be understood to be able to intervene in ways that uh, can uh, make uh, make us do advances in, in camp cancer therapeutics. The um, Another quote from uh, Bert Rogelstein from the book is that the revolution in cancer researchers uh, can be summed up in a single sentence. Cancer is in essence a genetic disease. We sort of uh, tweaked it a little bit at OICR and we said that cancer is a disease of the genome and uh, I think everybody here probably agrees and understands understands this but of course it, the, the, the challenge, the big challenge in treating cancer becomes that every tumor is different and every cancer patient is different even with the so-called same, uh, same uh, pathology and so even if you see two uh, patients with whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen uh, even if you see two patients with uh, pancreatic cancer, for example, you will uh, see very, you'll see a different mutation profile, you'll see uh, different uh, phenotypes and so forth. So trying to understand what's common between these patients, what's common between patients of, tumor, of cancer of the same type, and, uh, and what's unique about them is, is, is also uh, critical. And so one of the things that is important to be able to do at the beginning is to um, know what's already known about uh, various uh, tumor types that you're interested in. And so this is why we have databases, is to actually store and have information retrievable so that we can understand what's already known. And um, first thing you do when you want to look up for a database uh, of interest, so you go to Wikipedia and you look up um, 
cancer databases or cancer genome databases. And this is one of the second or third page that comes up. And if you look at that page, you will see uh, a number of um, databases that are available. And we're only going to talk about three of them here today, the ones that have the, the red circle next to them, which you don't see on there, but it's on the handout. Um, is uh, so the TCGA, the ICGC, and Cosmic, as I mentioned before. And um, I have here some uh, some publications that you can look up. So if you just replace the, the, the integer there, the number, the PubMed ID, um, on the URL at the bottom with that ID, then you'll get these papers uh, from TCGA, the Cancer Genome Atlas, ICGC, which is the International Cancer Genome Consortium, or COSMIC, the uh, database of somatic mutation. And there's also a paper about data access, which I'll uh, spend some time talking about as well. So the other thing I should mention and uh, is that everything I'm presenting to you today will probably be changed next year or six months from now or what have you. For example, TCGA, we know we're actually working with uh, colleagues in, uh, in, the, in the U.S. to actually change the whole TCGA data portal and how TCGA uh, data is going to be uh, available. So what I'm presenting to you, if you came and took our cancer genomics course next year, you'll get the new version. And that's probably true of every year uh, uh, and all of these uh, for many of these resources. That said, today, uh, the TCGA um, will always exist in one form or another with a different uh, user interface to understand it and, and view it. The data will, will remain the same because the TCGA project itself is basically almost finished and that they've generated the data. Now they have to, the data will be available in a number of different portals and, and different views, but the data, they, there's not going to be much more new data. Um, it's funded by the NIH, the National Cancer Institute within the NIH. And it's also uh, initially was funded also by the NHGRI, the National Human Genome Research Institute. And so those are two different institutes within the NIH, the National Institute of Health. And so NIH is built of about, uh, I forget, 13 or 15 different institutes. And the NCI is, is, the, is, is the largest one of, of all. This is the, the best funded one. Um, so there was a, a pilot project for the TCGA and, uh, and then uh, a full project, which is just uh, finishing now. And I mentioned the ICGC. So when the ICGC, the International Cancer Genome Consortium, started, TCGA joined force and was part of the ICGC. So ICGC and TCGA, uh, or TCGA is part of the ICGC. Um, that said, the uh, TCGA data is available. There's information on, on their, they have a wiki to maintain. And um, the way the TCGA project was developed over time is to um, divide the various tasks, not so that each center would have to do um, uh, QC or quality control on their samples or, or sequencing and so forth. So they've, they've, uh, dis um, they've identified several centers that would do these specialized tasks. And, uh, and therefore uh, would have centralized, concentrated efforts for different tasks across the country, across the US. Oops. Um, so the TCGA data includes uh, sequence reads, so the, the raw data that's uh, present at the Cancer Genome Hub. Um, there's um, sort of analyzed data, variation calls and so forth, uh, available on the Cancer Genome uh, Portal and integrated also, as I mentioned, with the ICGC. And later today, you'll, you'll be looking at some of this data in our, our labs. So the, the flow of information goes from these various um, QC places, uh, collecting of, of, uh, of, of tumors. And so the, the big challenge with the TCGA and the ICGC is always to get high quality samples and to get um, patients uh, that have this, this specific tumor type you're interested in and to have them early enough in their uh, diagnosis so that uh, they have not been treated yet and uh, early enough 
uh, or, or, or high quality enough also of samples. And so one of the first things that the TCGA pilot discovered is that there are many tumors that were uh, biopsied uh, were actually of, of quite low quality, and that meant that any downstream analysis, extraction of DNA, RNA, and, and, and proteins, and so forth, was sort of moot if the, if the tumor itself that you started with was of low quality. And so they, um, they caught themselves doing these, these uh, sort of not the best quality of sample, but because it's centralized, they were able to change their SOP, their uh, standard operating protocols, and update and, and improve the, the workflows to, to, to make things better. The other thing that we learned that the uh, TCGA did, and then we are doing also at the ICGC, is, uh, is to have a data coordinating center. And this is actually, NIH has learned that from its many years of funding many uh, initiatives of many uh, genome projects uh, from, uh, from the last 20 years, basically. And, uh, and to have a centralized place that hosts the data standardizes the, the way the data is presented and so forth. And so that's been key uh, for TCGA and it's been key for ICGC as well. Um, so the, the data portal itself provides a, a platform to search, download, and analyze TCG data sets. And um, they, they have uh, two data access tiers and, and we, you'll find that this comes around in, in other data portals as well. So you have what we re refer to the um, uh, open data and the control data. So open data is things that can be freely shared without, you don't even have to identify yourself. You can just download it, manipulate it, and do whatever you want with it. And the controlled access data is for all the data that is deemed um, where you could re-identify should you have the right uh, uh, expertise, uh, the, the patient. And so and if you have a few SNPs, for example, or a blood sample from a patient, you could re-identify them within this database because you're looking at raw data from their genome. And so any data where any data type that's considered re-identifiable, so here we, not, we do not have access to names and addresses and home addresses and things like that but we do have access to their genomic information. And the genomic information itself is uh, good enough to identify, re-identify the person should you have some other DNA to match it with. And so this is where, so if we have access to genomic information, to raw genomic information, not mutation data, but uh, genome variants, so inherited variants, uh, then that is deemed identifiable and that is deemed controlled access. And that's an important uh, thing to keep in mind uh, as we work with this data. So the data browser, which actually um, is not a data browser I use very much because I use the ICGC one mostly. And, uh, and you'll see that the ICGC has some of the TCGA information and then we'll, we'll sort of uh, explain that as, as uh, we, we go along. That said, if you have access to controlled access and from TCGA, sorry, Michelle. Oops, I have 15 minutes left. 10 minutes left. 11:45. Okay, I'm going to speed up. Okay, the ICGC. So ICGC.org. That's our homepage. It's an international project. So the idea of the ICGC is to collect 25,000 tumors from uh, 50 different tumor types. So it's 500 tumor per tumor type, so that's 25,000 tumors, which is 50,000 genomes. Uh, and it's a 10-year project. And right now we're in year seven of this project. So you'd think we're about three quarters of the way done, but we've accumulated about half the data only. So the next quarter, we'll, down, we'll finish the other half. But that's sort of true for most projects. And if, and if you see this uh, course accumulation of data, you have a good idea of how um, fast and, and it was slow at the beginning and, it, and as we go along it, it gets faster. So um, on the home page in the top bar you have information about um, the various, uh, various panels that are available at the, at the ICGC website and each project you can sort of browse and you can click and you'll see for example the pancreatic cancer which is one of the projects we do at the OICR 
is uh, takes you to the project, it describes the project, and so forth. And so this is more who's involved, what is the goal of the project, which funding agencies, and so forth. But that's not that imp interesting if you're looking for the data. So if you're looking for the data, the place to go is the, uh, the Data Coordinating Center, the DCC site, and that's available as uh, shown to you here on the home page. And for example, this is uh, will take you to the DCC, ICGC.org. And so the next lecture is going to be all about this. So I'm not going to go too much details about this, but we'll you'll be spending some time. This is the page where you'll be starting from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to explain to you how the data that is, ends up in this place, where it came from. And so this is a rather complicated slide, but it basically points out the two sources of data that the main sources of data that comprise, comprise of for the ICGC. So ICG, as I mentioned, TCGA is part of ICGC. So there's the TCGA part and the non-TCGA ICGC part, which is the other half. And that's all the other countries. So it's Asia, Europe, uh, South America, um, uh, yeah, and one African, one sort of Middle Eastern country. And so at the OICR, we bring all of this together. So we get all the open data from the TCGA and all the open data from ICGC. We put that on a data portal. And then all the controlled access data i.e., for example, germline variants, we cannot get those from the TCGA because those have to be behind, uh, are, are held behind the, the TCGA. So at, at the ICGC, so the TCGA has a DB gap to control, uh, for controlled access, and at the ICGC we have DACO, which is Data Access Compliance Office. And so because we don't have DACO users, which are ICGC uh, users that are allowed to look at controlled access data, do not have access to DB gap. So you have to get two permissions from two different groups to be able to access everything. And so once you get both of them, and then you, oops, sorry. Once you get access to both of them, then you can access the, the whole thing. So as I mentioned, TCGA is part of ICGC, uh, but there are, difference, there are differences between the two. They have different tumor types. They have different uh, ge uh, geographic rules. Um, they have many, so different countries have different rules. Uh, many countries uh, versus one uh, jurisdiction. So TCGA is only one country, and ICGC is many countries. And we have actually different definitions. This is where it gets a bit complicated. We have different definitions of what we call controlled uh, data and, and different access rules as well. So ICGC has, these are the, on the, on the left-hand side, all the uh, open access data, and on the right-hand side, the controlled access data. And so you'll notice that at the bottom uh, here, I think you see it, yes, that all somatic variants from exome or whole genome are controlled open. So a somatic variant mutation, whether it com wherever it comes from, is controlled, is, c is considered uh, open, open data. On the TCGA, only variants that come from exome data are considered uh, open. Somatic mutations that come from whole genome data are considered uh, controlled access. And the reason there is that they don't, the, the US and the NIH and so forth, do not consider, um, and I don't know why they think that, but they don't think that the uh, whole genome mutation calling softwares are perfect. I don't know why, but they don't think they're perfect. And so they think that what happens in the whole genome effort, there are some variants, germline variants, that sort of filter through by accident. And there probably are some. The way to identify those will probably take us 10 years, and it won't matter anymore in 10 years. But that's a separate discussion, not from here. But it's important to consider that if, so when we show you on the ICGC data portal variants from a, a, a TCGA tumor, we're only showing you variants that have come from exome sequencing, not from whole genome sequencing. Otherwise, if it's from a, let's say, Australian tumor, it's got both the mutation there will be either from exome or whole genome. And right now, the, ver the majority of the data is from exome. There's about, let's say, 10, 15% that is from uh, whole genome. But I think in the future, the more and more will come from whole genome 
And so the difference between the two uh, will, will become uh, more apparent. So there are some, a lot of similarities though. So all the ICGC and TCGA users agreed to keep all computer systems, you know, things secure and, and to protect controlled access data and to monitor, monitor the, uh, the usage of it and so forth. And they've all agreed also to destroy it once they finish their work and to only use the secure transfer protocols and to encrypt controlled access data and so forth. And, um, but if you look at the, the, this is one example of one file that we keep on our, uh, on the ICGC data portal, which is a simple, so what we've done is we've archived all the mutations from all tumors and we put them in this VCF format, which is uh, the standard format for, for mutations. So this file is got all the mutations, all the somatic mutations that we have at the ICGC. So that means it has all the, uh, whole genome extracted mutations from non-TCGA samples and TCGA samples is for, and for TCGA samples it doesn't include mutations that have come from uh, uh, whole genomes because we don't see those because they're not open data. Okay. So um, this is the ICGC portal overview. So one of the examples I'm going to quickly go over is how to get access to this controlled access data. And so uh, you basically identify yourself, you fill out a form detailing uh, the, inf the project contact people, the technology you'll be uh, to assure that it's keeping the data secure, and, and the fact that you've read all the data agreements. And then you, um, all this gets put into a PDF, you sign the PDF, you get it signed by an authority at your institution that's able to fire you should you uh, not agree to it or should you break any of the rules outlined in, in this document. And then you send it off to the uh, DACO office, which is um, a number of uh, legal experts that will, bioethicist types, that will review your application and then grant you uh, uh, access to. The, so this is the DACO form. This is identifying yourself. And this is starting the process. You fill out a form. It's a bit like uh, an income tax form. It's, it's pretty long, lots of panels and so forth. And uh, what you do is I mentioned all the various categories. And recently, as of last week, we actually added a, a cloud storage issue. So because we all know now that doing a lot of this work in cloud is it diff requires different permissions. So if you're going to use clouds, you have to opt in to, to agree to a number set, an additional set of rules uh, that uh, you will be uh, abiding by. If you don't want to use cloud computing for to look at analyze your data, then you can opt out, and then you don't uh, you you don't have to uh, worry about those. But there are um, a number of, of groups, obviously in Europe, with the uh, safe harbor rules that have been changed or have been um, challenged recently and so forth, so we had to, to, uh, to abide, uh, to uh, adapt to those changes. So we, these are all the documents you said that you have to sign off on having read. Two, diff two new documents we've added recently is the, um, the best practices on using, uh, being secure in the cloud and uh, the uh, Global Alliance um, uh, framework for responsive, uh, responsible usage of genomic data and, and, and as well. So if you sign off, you do the form and you validate it without having signed off, then everything's red and something's wrong. But if you check off all the things properly, then the validation gives you a green light and allows you to print a PDF, sorry, allows you to print this PDF that you can then sign and, and get uh, off to uh, the DACO office. And now on the website, you'll have the, the list of all the DACO approved projects. And, um, uh, and basically, this gives you, you now have the DACO approval. You have to do a similar process. You have to go through if you want to get access to TCGA data. And it's, they're totally independent of each other. And you have to do that one. Uh, and there's also a cloud component in that one as well. So quickly in the end, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the uh, Cosmic uh, database, which is out of the Sanger Institute here in uh, Hingston. And um, so the catalog of somatic mutations in cancer. And so basically the way COSMIC works is it gets its data from places like the ICGC and from PubMed, so from reading the literature, 
and it looks for all the papers that talk about some somatic mutation. So you can think of COSMIC, and COSMIC is, predates ICGC and, and, and TCGA. So they've been collecting mutations, uh, somatic mutations, for a long time. But you can anticipate that papers that uh, collected such data before whole genome sequencing or exomes were being done were doing targeted sequencing, or even they would look at one gene, and so they would say, look at KRAS and 10,000 di different individuals and look at where the mutation was. And that's the kind of information that goes into COSMIC. So today, if you look into COSMIC and look, show me all the mutations on KRAS, it will come from those ty types of papers that looked at specifically, you know, 5,000 patients and at that, they looked at that one gene and didn't look at any other gene. And also, it will, or they looked at a gene panel, so they looked at 10 genes or 20 genes. And it also includes data from ICGC slash TCGA. But TCGA, it's only getting the data from, um, from exome sequencing, not from whole genome sequencing. So right now in ICGC, there's about 12,000 genomes pr represented, and about 2,000 of those are from whole genome, and about 10,000 from exome. So it gives you an idea of the ratio and what you'd be missing from, from uh, the TCGA side. So COSMIC, as I mentioned, somatic mutations only um, from various sources, and um, there are lots of different ways. It's a very rich website, uh, lots of different ways of looking at the data there. Uh, and also mentioned, it's also integrated into uh, ICGC portal. So from the ICGC portal, you'll see a COSMIC link. So you can go from a gene of interest in the ICGC portal to the, the COSMIC equivalent. So there's FAQs, frequently asked questions, uh, available in the data portal, and lots of different ways of looking at your various genes of interest. And uh, so just a few screenshots to, to show you uh, all of that. And so I'm finishing off now. So, um, nope, any seat? You've only missed the best lecture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so in closing, so remember that these sites have um, lots of documentation. Uh, the things are changing very quickly. Like I mentioned, things I mentioned about TCGA today will be different next year. Uh, we know they're going to be different because we're actually building the next one. And so we are, the, the changes are, are coming uh, quickly. Um, there, um, don't be afraid to explore. Don't be afraid to, to go click on things and find out what's there. And um, if you're interested in what, you've, uh, what you're hearing about today, there's, uh, we do a five-day workshop. So we're, today we're doing a four-hour workshop. We spread this into five days. So you can imagine that we, we can do a lot more in five days. And this is a different slide than the one you have here in the slide deck. Because I found some other people that have been involved with the workshop, and there's actually some more that I'm missing. But uh, the CBW is, is, like I said, has been running for 16 years, and uh, these are only people really from the last uh, seven or eight years. And it's really uh, an exciting and, a, and, and very great group of people to work with. So thank you very much. And if there are any questions, I'm going to be here for the rest of the day as well. Okay? Any questions? Or we move on to the next?